Hello. So today I thought I'd show you how I achieved this. It's um, a lovely rusty textured kitchen paper towel. Um, I've used various things. I've used Paper Artsy Rusting Powder, Paper Artsy Grunge Paste, White Vinegar, which is Sarsen's Distilled Malt Vinegar, but it's it's just white vinegar. You could use cider vinegar, um, just normal malt vinegar, white wine vinegar, whatever vinegar you've got in the house. It doesn't really make that much difference. Um, what else have we got? We've got a fan brush. We've got kitchen paper. We call it kitchen roll in the UK. But it's just basically paper roll that you would use in the kitchen. This has got a textured pattern on it, which I quite like because it adds an interesting effect. But you can use, if you've just got some plain, you can use plain... Yeah, you can use um, tissue paper so long as it's relatively strong. Um, you're going to be applying a wet medium to it and moving it about, so it needs to be reasonably strong. Um, I've also got a stencil. Now, these stencils here are from a, st a set by um, Stencil Girl um, by... Seth Apter. They come in an A4 sheet and I've just cut them apart. They're ATC size and, and they're rather nice for um, using on ATCs or using portions of them. Um, really, really useful. I chose they're just patterned ones. The ones without words are a lot of detailed different patterns um, because I wanted sort of something that I could just rip apart um, so I've got these three I'll possibly just use this one just to show you I might try one of the others with the words as you can see it's gone nice and rusty but we've got all different sort of tones in here we've got the nice rusty raised texture but we've also got background texture where the um, rusting powder has just moved a little bit. I'll show you something that I mean this is a work in progress this is a set of ATCs there's another eight uh, which are um, in, pro in the process of being done it's just an ATC size. I've added some coffee, diluted coffee granules in water, quite a thick solution, uh, just to stain the paper. Uh, you could use inks, paints, whatever you wanted to create the background. And then I've just used portions of the rusty tissue and the textured tissue just to add interest. And then just some stamps, stamped images, uh, parts of this stamp, which is a Eclectica Mini um, by Seth Apter again. And I've just used portions of it round the edges to add interest. I think it's an excellent stamp. Uh, it's EM49. It's an excellent stamp for, for just adding interest round the edges. So we'll get started. I'll set some of the things away that we don't need. I've got quite a cluttered desk as it is. And I think we will have a go with one of these. One that says a word. What shall we have? That one says heel. We'll have that one. That's quite interesting. And let's see. I think we'll do these two again. I rather like those. So I'll set the excess stencils apart away. I've got, let's see, how many have I got? I'm going to put 
the grunge paste onto one sheet of the kitchen roll and then I've got another one, two, another three sheets. So I'm going to set one underneath, the one that I'm going to be working on. Yeah. Hopefully you can see this. I've got rather a cluttered desk today. Yeah, you should be able to see that. And then once we've um, got the grunge paste dried and the rusting powder on the top, I'm going to put these two on the top. So I don't need those at the moment. So we'll start by making sure our stencils are the right way around. So that one says heel. So I'll have that here. Another one here and then one there. Now I've got myself a, a spatula, palette knife, whatever you've got and this is the paper artsy grunge paste. Now you'll see it says old on here. I have two uh, jars of this. This one I got quite a long time ago and I used part of it and then I, I sealed it up well and I didn't use it for a while and it went quite solid. I Some texture paste and grunge paste and everything do go off quicker than others. I always make sure that I have them well sealed. A lot of them you can't get them back. Once they've gone solid that's it, you're snookered. This one I actually gradually added a bit more water into it and kept mixing it up, mixing it up and it actually it's come back and it's fine so I can use it. So it's not a waste if it goes... Dr it wasn't completely solid but it was getting there. Um, but I was really pleased I could get it back. I'll show you the consistency compared to the new one and it's more or less the same. So there's not a great deal. It's maybe a little bit slacker. I maybe put a bit too much water in there. Uh, but basically, it's fine. So I'm going to get a reasonable amount on my spatula. This isn't an exact science. It does creep under the stencil a little bit because this paper is quite flexible so it, it can move a little bit when you take the stencil off so I don't mind that because I like a rustic um, sort of haphazard almost look I do try to not go backwards and forwards over the same area too many times because it can work it underneath the stencil so that's there. We'll do all three. Just check I'm still in shot. Going all over where the holes in the stencil are. Alright, and then the third one. Oh, what I'm going to do is gather up some of this off the top, put it on there. The grunge paste does dry fairly quickly and the fact that this is absorbent, it does take so much of the moisture out of the grunge paste to set off with straight away more or less. Now this one, because it's got a word, I'm going to take quite a lot off so that you can see the word quite clearly. Let me take a bit more off there. Yeah, you see it's it's actually set a little and I'm taking some of it off so use the excess up here. That's it. And 
There we are, put that straight in water, my lid on, make sure it's really tightly on. What I do tend to do, because I won't be able to put these stencils straight into water, I haven't room for a bucket of water to put them in, I get a couple of wet wipes that are nice and moist. I have one on my desk. I'll take this off. See, you have got to be a little bit careful because it can rip. Put that on the wet wipe. Hopefully we'll still be able to see the word. Again, onto the wet wipe. This one off. Onto the wet wipe. And then I cover it over with a second wet wet wipe and set it aside so that it won't it won't dry out before I get chance to clean it off. Just wondering where I can put it out of the way. Alright, so I'll set that out of the way. And I can clean those later. So we've got our grunge paste on here. I think it's we've got a little bit of a gap here. That one's come out really, really well. Um, I think we can still read the word and we've got some detail here. Now, I have got my rusting powder in its little pot. I'm just going to sprinkle. And it does, because I've just put one hole in the lid, it, it does come out as a stream. But don't worry about that because we're going to move it. That's why you need reasonably strong kitchen roll. So that you're able to move it without the kitchen roll um, ripping or coming apart. All right. Forgotten my mask. I normally wear a mask because this is a very fine powder. Um, I don't think I've got one handy. That's very naughty of me. But basically, we're then going to move the powder about so that it gets onto all areas of where we've got our grunge paste. This is why I wear the mask normally. Because then any bits that get in the air, being a fine powder, it will be trapped by the mask. You've got to work fairly quickly because this stuff dries quite quite quickly and you want it onto the grunge paste while it's wet. If your grunge paste dries out it's not going to work as well. It looks like I'm putting a lot on and you think oh what a waste but I'm actually going to capture it. So put the stopper on there. And I'm just moving the paper around so that the powder sticks to the grunge paste. But then we're also, so I've got my plastic tray underneath. I can shake it quite a lot. I'm probably out of focus because I'm very near the camera. If there's areas where you you think you don't want the paste so much, you can just brush it off gently with your, not the paste, the powder. You can just brush it off gently with your fan brush. So... I'm 
don't know if the word one's going to work as well because it's got into quite a lot of the background areas. Yeah, a bit more of it's come off there. Sometimes if you just tap it on the back, any loose powder will come off. Yeah, we can see a little bit more of the background. If your grunge paste is starting to dry, you can very, very, very gently brush it with your fan brush, hardly touching it. And it just moves it away from the areas where there isn't any there we are, you can see on this. What you can do is basically wait while your grunge paste is dry completely and then brush off the excess. That's the better way to do it, but I don't want to be spending ages waiting for it to dry before I had to show you the next step. So we've got a little bit of the powder round and about. I don't mind that because that will give us a, a nice effect when we activate the powder. You can now get your powder back into your container. So you're not, it's like embossing powder basically, you're not using as much as the, you think you are because you, the excess is going back into the container. I have a container here with a lot wider mouth. It's, as you can see, a lot easier to get the powder back into here. And also, if I'm wanting to put powder onto a specific area, I can get my little fan brush in here, put it over an area of whatever I'm working on, and just sprinkle little bits onto the area. So I'll just put this back in here, try not to hit the camera. And again, don't worry if you've got some still left in the box because that will work with the next next step of the technique. Right, so we've got our rusting powder all contained. We've got our two sheets, our one where we've got the grunge paste on and then the spare one. This is white vinegar in here and it's in a dropper container. It's one of those little travel things that you can buy for taking your shampoo etc away with you. Just going to see how dry that is. That's relatively dry. Ideally you would wait till it was completely dry. And then I'm just going to sprinkle the vinegar over the top. You want all of the rusting powder to have contact with vinegar and your vinegar will wick out from the areas to the edge of the kitchen roll If you don't like strong smells, this maybe is not the technique for you because the vinegar does it does smell very, very strong. Um, but it's a means to an end. I, I don't mind the smell of vinegar, I just imagine fish and chips. Um, but it does have quite a strong smell, especially when it's combined with the rusting powder, which obviously, I don't know what's in it, but it must have metal of some description in it. So it does smell quite metallic-y and acidy when it's it's working. Um, but I tend to just open a window and just put it in a room that's very well ventilated and 
just don't sort of work in that room for a little while. I just keep adding a little bit more vinegar. I'm going to the edges of the paper towel because then I'll have all the extra bits as well. Uh, the rusting powder you can see has come off a few areas of the grunge paste probably because I didn't let it dry before I applied it. It's not it isn't a deal breaker for me. I don't mind that. Um, this is a bit of a risk because the grunge paste is still a little bit wet but I'm going to then put my other two kitchen towels on the top and add more vinegar. As you can see it does use quite a lot of vinegar. I've used nearly my full bottle um, but I do add I think it's worth it. What you can do is you can get your surplus rusting powder in your little pot, dip your fan brush in and just add a little bit on the top because all these, the four sheets, will all get some rust on them. But if you want more rust in some areas, just add a little bit on the top there. I get any little blobs like that I tend to just sprinkle some vinegar on the top and it takes it away the sort of the line of the rusting powder and actually makes quite a nice little organic pattern. So there we are. I'm going to leave that possibly overnight now to work um, and see what we get and then I'll show you the results. Right so it's not been overnight yet I've come back this evening to see how we're doing and this is looking really interesting. Um, this is the top layer of the kitchen roll Let's see if I can get the which is two, two sheets See if I can gently pull it off without ripping it. And we've got some nice rusting going on here. And this is just extra to the the main sort of event really. But that when that dries that'll be really interesting to use. You can see, hopefully, there's some of the texture of the kitchen roll is showing through. We've got some nice little areas of darker greys and where the um, rusting powder sort of just mottled the, the uh, kitchen roll. This is the other side. It's still very, very wet and still very, very smelly. I'll just pop that to one side, I'm breaking it up. This is starting to react, but it hasn't had as much oxygen. Um, so obviously it's not going to react as much because there hasn't been as much oxygen on this layer. Um, oh, now that's nice. On the back. There we I'll just turn it over. This is lovely. Even if we didn't have any rusting on the front, this is really, really nice. And if you remember, there's two layers to that, so we'll get that as a bonus. Let's see if I can move it up a little bit. Oops, trying not to rip it. So it's still very, very wet. You can see there's some nice patterns going on here as well um, of the rust coming through. This, now that I've opened it up to the air, should react a little bit more. <coughs> Excuse me because it's it's had this other these other two sheets on the top so that stopped the oxygen getting to it and um 
basically the rust in action needs sort of an acid, the metal and oxygen for it to develop. You can see it's starting to go but it will go a lot more. I might help it along a little bit with just a tad more vinegar. without putting the top layer back on again. Just get my fan brush and just gently move that over. There we are, I've just uncovered the grunge paste a little bit there because the the rusting powder is still wet. It's not adhered because the rust hasn't developed completely yet. So I'm going to leave it overnight so that you can see the, the full effect after uh, an evening of drying overnight. I'm going to put this top layer, I'm going to put it back over. I'm going to lay that on a sheet of plastic to dry overnight and set it aside so both have got room to develop more and to dry out overnight and then we'll come back and you can see what we've got. Right so we're back it's been overnight and this has turned into the most lovely rusty textured uh, paper towels. We've got the two bottom ones and then we've got the two from the top. These aren't as dramatic but it doesn't matter because you can lit use little areas of these on things and they've still got some nice interest. So what I'm going to do now is separate the layers. So you just find a corner or an edge where they're separated slightly and very gently just pull them apart. The rust may make it so that you get some torn areas but I usually tear it up anyway to use it. So we've got one Two, three, four, and they're just the sort of slightly rusted ones. These are the very rusty ones. I usually find at a corner there's an area that has already started to separate. Um, but if you can't find an area then you can usually put a pin in between the two layers. It, I'll just ruffle it about a bit like that and it'll find an area out. Ah, there we are, yeah. The moisture seems to separate it. Where you've got a lot of the rust and grunge paste, it does stick a little bit more. but it still comes apart. This is lovely. And you can see you've got some texture from the pattern of the kitchen roll, swirls, as well as the texture of the rust. Again, here we've got some nice, deeper, rusty areas. This is the very top layer with the, the grit paste on. 
and that's absolutely lovely I hope that's focusing okay I'll just set that aside a minute because I'm going to show you something else and this is the bottom one again we've got a corner that started and as I say I just do it gently and then it's less likely to tear again really nice rusty areas this is the very bottom that was in contact with the plastic tray and that is this I love that's some really really nice texture but even just this that's got a little bit of rust on it you can use as well this looks rather nice it's got some rusty texture patterns on it I don't know whether I managed to get any of that up I'm just wondering if I've got some sellotape somewhere that I could try and get that. Let's have a go. It may not work, but we can try for nothing. This is a, something I've not tried before. So we'll go. Actually, we'll go up here so you can see. Just pressing the, I think they call it packing tape in the US, but I'm just. Oh, yes, that's quite nice. It's very subtle, but it's nice. Let's see if I've got something white. There we are. Very, very subtle, but quite nice. There. See if I can get a little bit more. This is a bit that you probably can't see. I'm probably off out of shot. Press it really quite firmly. I've not tried this before, so this is just a Thing to try. Yeah, let's see whether that piece of white paper. There we are, that's quite interesting. So I'll do the rest of that off camera. Right. Now, this is the main piece the top sheet with the grunge paste on it i've got some metallic waxes vintage gold or brushed iron they're both from prima they're um finnabar art alchemy they are getting a little dry because i've had them a lot of years and with these you don't need a lot so i'm just getting a little bit not chunky bits, just a nice layer on my finger. And I'm just going to gently rub over the top. That's the, the brushed iron. And you do get different effects with different colours. So this one I'll do the gold. My gold is very, very dry. Just getting a little bit. And I'll just rub gently. I'm not putting any pressure. I'm just rubbing gently on the top. And that just highlights the texture. on there so hopefully 
you should be able to see the textures come out nicely there. It's a little bit more subtle on the with the iron, but it does have a shimmer when you move it around. But you can use it just as it is, <clears throat> just without highlighting the texture and just as it is. <clears throat> 